Jacob is back at it here to give everyone another Game of Thrones Season 4 episode review video. Before I get into that, though, pretty important if you're not caught up to the point where I am in rewatching or watching Game of Thrones, or you're just not entirely sure, then you definitely need to take the initiative and pay attention to the episode's title, which, of course, I'll say as well as put in the description for you. If that happens to be the case and you're not caught up, it would be my recommendation that you don't watch this video any further just to stay away from any potential spoilers. This will be Game of Thrones Season 4, Episode Number 8. Title of this episode is called The Mountain and the Viper. This will be my review reaction recap after just watching the episode, and it's now one of my favorite Game of Thrones episodes of all time. It wasn't before. It is now. I guess it took me a few times to watch it, but it's an awesome episode. Molestown is attacked by the Wildlings, but Egret spares Gilly and her son. Not sure why. Maybe she felt guilty if she would have killed them. She has a conscience, unlike the other Wildlings. I don't know. And then when news breaks, or news reaches uh, Castle Black, uh, Sam starts freaking out for Gilly, but the other Night's Watchmen assure him that, uh, you know, Gilly has survived worse and uh, may yet still be alive. Uh, she may not be, but there's a good chance she will be because she knows how to survive. Reek, assuming his previous identity as Theon, enters Mount Kaleen and uh, convinces the occupying Ironborn to surrender in return for safe passage home. However, Ramsay has the Ironborn garrison flayed instead, and then as a reward for retaking the fort, Roose Bolton presents Ramsay with a decree of legitimization, which means he's now Ramsay Bolton instead of Ramsay Snow, which is a pretty big deal. And then the Boltons depart for their new seat at Winterfell. Masande notices Grey Worm. He's uh, watching her bathe, but he later apologizes and uh, she asks if he remembers his castration, saying it was a horrible thing to do to a boy. And then Grey Worm, he responds that if he had not become an uns unsullied, that uh, they would have never met. So basically, meeting Masande is like the biggest thing that's happened to him in his life. In his life. That's wow. Meanwhile, Barristan receives a letter with the Hand of the King symbol on it, Jorah's royal pardon from Robert Baratheon for spying on Daenerys. Jorah is forced to admit his duplicity, and Daenerys exiles him from Marine. So that didn't go well for Jorah. Uh, Baelish is interrogated by the, the people of the Vale about Liza Aaron's death, who are doubtful that she uh, committed suicide. Sansa is asked to testify. She reveals her identity and then collaborates uh, Baelish's story and convinces the, the, the people of the Vale of his innocence. And then Robin Aaron is instructed to begin his lordship by uh, touring the Vale. And then uh, uh, the Hound and Arya arrive at the Bloody Gates and then they get informed of Liza Aaron's death. And now Arya just starts laughing because that was like a big thing for the Hound. Like, ah, ha, ha, you didn't get what you wanted. Uh, but that's a fun relationship. And then, of course, the main focus of this particular episode, Tyrion's trial by combat begins over in uh, Martell, quickly gains the upper hand and knocks the wounded mountain Gregor Clegane to the ground and screams at him to confess that he killed Elia Martell and her children. Uh, Gregor, or the mountain, uh, then trips Oberyn and confesses to the murder while crushing his skull with his hands. And then uh, Tywin then affirms Tyrion's sentence for uh, the crime of death. And, uh, you know, that's not what they were talking about. He was going to go to the Night's Watch, but nope, not this time. He's going to die for all the shit that he talked about the at the trial. Maybe that wasn't even going to happen. He was going to die all along. But uh, Tyrion is, uh, he's in trouble. So that's how the episode ends. Uh, pretty crazy episode. I, I've watched it at least three or four times, if not more. And for some reason, it just didn't click. But there's interesting things that happen in this episode that really make it really powerful. And then the fight between, you know, uh, Oberyn and the, the mountain is actually very entertaining. It's brutal when he just grabs, I killed her and just crushes his head. So I got to give this episode a 10 out of 10. There's no other score that you can give it. And uh, the character of the episode, the spotlight character of the episode, I'm going to give it to Oberyn Marteau. Oberyn Martell, because uh, he was awesome. Uh, he's short-lived, obviously. This is the last time we're going to see him, but he was a really good character and could have done a lot more on Game of Thrones, but you can catch that actor on The Mandalorian uh, if you want to see him. So uh, you've heard what I have to say. Now it is uh, your turn if you're a fan of Game of Thrones. Uh, even if you don't like the last couple seasons, 
be sure to smash that like button. If there's anybody that you know that would be interested or there's a group of people that would be interested in this, go ahead and share the video with them and let me know that you did that. I, I appreciate it and you'll get... Uh, You'll get some props for that, and uh, you know, sound off the conversation about your thoughts on this episode. Um, you know, who, what would be your score? Who would be your character of the episode, oh, or anything else Game of Thrones related? If you want to talk about your favorite episodes of Game of Thrones, or your least favorite, or your favorite characters, that's fine. Just put it all in the comment section. And of course, last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button. I want to grow this channel. Subscribe to the channel. Join the team. Show your damn support, and of course, be a part of something special. And J Dev will return.